It's Lucy Litch, and this is Tiny House Conversations. It's the Australian-based podcast where I interview experienced tiny houses, tiny builders, and adventurers in the tiny world, so you can discover how to create, build, and transition into tiny life. Before we get into today's tiny house conversation, I want to tell you about something exciting coming up in November 2022. It's a free three-day online tiny house summit created by Ethan Waldman, the host of the Tiny House Lifestyle podcast and author of the guide Tiny House Decisions. Ethan was a guest on my show in episode 25, as well as featured in episode 26. And guess what? I'm going to be a guest speaker at the summit talking with Ethan all about tiny houses in Australia. The summit will also feature many different tiny house folks from around the world talking about all the different topics you want to know more about, including composting toilets, trailers, solar systems, tiny house design, building science, renting out your tiny house for short and long-term stays, how to get out of debt and start saving for a tiny house, and plenty more. So if you're a curious tiny houser who's deciding if this way of life is for you and you want to learn more about tiny houses, or if you're already a tiny houser and you love being part of as many tiny house events as you can, I'd love to see you there. To register for the summit for free and reserve your space, just head over to tinyhousesummit.co. That's tinyhousesummit.co or .co. I can't wait to see you there. Now on to the show. Welcome back to Tiny House Conversations. On the show today, I'm speaking with Zisha and Bronson. They're the creators and hosts of Find the Perfect Place, a YouTube series where they feature gorgeous homes of all shapes and sizes. They understand the perfect place is different for everyone, and their mission is to showcase variety, uniqueness, and beauty within all. The idea to find the perfect place is one which resonates with us all. The desire and constant search for perfection whilst coming to terms that there is also great beauty in imperfection. They hope you come along for the ride and enjoy the journey as they find the perfect place. And in this conversation, we talk all about finding the perfect place and the different tiny homes that Zisha and Bronson have stayed in and some of their favorite features. We also talked about some of the challenges along the way of creating this series what Bronson and Zisha's perfect place looks like. They also tease some upcoming tiny home tours and so much more. So on to this tiny house conversation with Bronson and Zisha. Zisha and Bronson, welcome to Tiny House Conversations and thank you so much for being here with me. Thank you so much for having us. We appreciate it. Really excited to be here. (laughs) Yeah, excited to have you. And You guys are the creators and the hosts of the YouTube series, Find the Perfect Place. And I'd love if you were able to start by just sharing a bit more about your background and and what inspired you to create this series and what is it all about? Yeah, absolutely. So we had a little bit of extra time up our sleeve when it came to um, the little lockdowns and restrictions. And we were pondering, you know, what what things we want to do with our future. And we came to the realisation, like, pretty pretty quickly was that we love seeing new places. We love homes. We love tiny homes at that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, so we thought it would be cool to mix them all into one with creating a little bit of a, a YouTube series, find the perfect place. The name didn't come so quickly though. We knew, we knew the idea yeah. that we didn't know what we were going to call it. So we snowballed several different names well, a lot more than several, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we finally landed on find the perfect place, and we think it resonates quite well. It's um, it's sort of about the everyone's own individual unique journey and how the perfect place is different to everyone, basically. Wouldn't you say, Zisha? Yeah, absolutely. It's just like finding I don't know the magic in all different kinds of places and uh, experiences and travels and things like that. So that's kind of what we really want to yeah bring through in each episode and share the magic of each space beautiful and you know just as we were talking offline before I mentioned that I came across you guys in one of the the tiny house Facebook groups and I know that you visit different kinds of homes and uh you know whether it's tiny homes and then other types of places as well and and I'm just curious 
what do you look for when you find the perfect place for, to stay? Like when you're going, okay, I want to, I want to go and, and stay here or this place looks really great. Like what, what are the features that you look for? There's so many elements and variations to what the perfect place can actually be. So we love featuring places from tiny homes all the way through to family homes and everything in between or as far as the imagination can basically take us. Very unique stays as well. It really relates back to that whole um, part that Bronson said before about finding the uniqueness and how the perfect place is different to everyone just sharing the magic of each space, <laughs> mm. whether it be big or small or unique or really out of the ordinary or whatever it may be. Yeah. The biggest thing for us is, is finding something that captures our attention, but also what our viewers would, would find interesting um, to learn about. So in terms of how the home was built, so how it's laid out, the interior de- design with the decor, everything uh, you could basically imagine which goes into any individual home. It's it's very it's very broad, I guess is the easiest way to put yeah. it. It's super, super broad and, and we, yeah. we struggle to uh, nail it down to one sentence. But I guess the easiest way is um, to say that we showcase everything from tiny homes to luxury living and everything in between that captures our eye. Yeah, and I feel like you guys really are able to capture the essence of like, I think I've watched like quite a few of your uh, tours and you really do feel you capture the essence of of the home and the space. It's so much more than that as well. It's like I feel like you guys show the essence of like different experiences that people can have and what people can do with different designs and different um uh, interiors of homes as well so it's it's really cool to to just see like the the different journey that you're going in as well and you're kind of taking everyone along for the ride it's really inspiring yeah they're so different each and every stay is so different from the next and I mean we've done a few tiny homes in particular and each of them are so different and offer such I don't know different experiences which is really really cool mm-hmm. and quite often um, of course the, the the hosts and the people that have created these beautiful spaces um, that's their passion project you know they've put so much time love energy effort they've seen a vision in their mind and they've brought it to life and then it's really cool to be you know then come along with our passion which is creating content and particular video content home tours and um, kind of bring the two passions together almost they've had their passion project and then we come in and try our very best to you know bring it to life but then other people can experience it you know as if they were there but they're not if that makes sense yeah yeah showcasing their home on a different medium that they might not have considered before for sure I can I can really see that and we mentioned already that you've stayed in a few different tiny homes and and that that they all all are very different so I know that there's like a a tiny boathouse and there was a shipping container and farm stays and all of that so I'm, I'm wondering if you're able to just share like a little bit about your experiences and maybe what were some of your favorite features that you got to experience in, in each of those? Every single home that we go into, they've all got something uniquely amazing about them, don't yeah. they? Like, for example, the the tiny boathouse, like that was really, really cool. When it was an experience there. like no other. Like, yeah. you know, we were so surprised just to find it not so far from home for us here on the Gold Coast and just to travel and positioned in a bamboo forest and so much love and care had gone into creating a wonderful space for then the hosts to uh, share on Airbnb so others can come and experience it. And then the container container conversion was oh, just so on the cool. Farm state. Yeah. 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 Because it's like you, you just think like once that was a container, just a metal shell. And then they've just put so much time and energy and care and converted it into this beautiful, livable space with absolutely everything you need, full-size appliances, probably one of the biggest kitchens that we've filmed, even though it was a tiny home. Mm, yeah, it was massive. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was just incredible to see what the uh, owners had done with the space. And then uh, the one on wheels was really cool as well because it was so uh, excluded, you know, it was on how many acres of property oh, yeah. was that on? That was Little Country Stays, and I think it was it was just under four hundred acres of super farmland, pri- super private farmland. So we were um, sitting on top of a little hill in the middle of nowhere. nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> 
it was just really like an escape away just from absolutely everything. And that was also our first loft bedroom stay, which was quite cool. Mm. Um, that kind of layout in a tiny home was was very different because the, con- the container stay or the container conversion, that was a 40-foot container, whereas the one on wheels was much smaller and it had the bedroom up top, which I don't know, there's something fun about that. It takes you back to being a child and kind of like you're in a little cubby house, which is really fun. Mm. <laughs> we never actually stayed in a tiny house before filming the series yeah. either yeah. yeah we'd always been interested in, in them and checking them out and I guess this was our our way to not only experience it for ourselves but also share that experience and the possibility of people are interested uh, in these spaces or similar spaces uh, with the world so it's pretty cool yeah and I think that just from like seeing what you guys do as well as just talking to lots of different people, like there are so many people looking towards tiny life. Part of what what I can see you guys offering is giving people a taste into that. And then maybe the next step is they can go and experience it for themselves in, in like a short term Airbnb before, you know, jumping into it. Cause I know that there's some people like, I guess myself that are like, yeah, I definitely know like I could live in a small space. Others might be like, oh, I don't know, like, you know, is there going to be enough room? And am I going to be able to have, I mean, you just mentioned before Zisha about like full sized appliances. Am I going to be able to have the comforts of, you know, what I have now in my, in my home? currently and and so I think it's like there's something to be said for being able to experience it for a few days or a week or something like that to see if you know it is something that people might be able to do long term and it sounds like that's something that is is giving you guys a, an insight into maybe what you want to do with with tiny living in the future as well that's exactly right yeah we, we've We've pinched ideas from every home we've stayed in, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's it's really worthwhile experiencing uh, a tiny stay, even if it is, you know, temporary, such as a booking site to experience it for a weekend or a week or whatever it may be. Because when I first saw Tiny Living, I really only thought of it in a from, well, from a financial perspective, um, and you know how amazing it would be to to own a home outright and not have you know a mortgage kind of lingering over you for however many years. And that was very appealing to me at first. But then when I had the experience of actually staying in one for the first time, it really opened my eyes to the fact that there's actually so much more to gain from tiny living than just the financial benefits that it can come with. The feeling that I felt my first day, it was just like, wow, this is so incredibly peaceful. Um, It's a really fantastic way to be connected with nature more because, I don't know, it encourages you outdoors, not that the the space within the home is also beautiful, but just to have nature literally right on your doorstep. There's just something so incredibly peaceful about that. And then, yeah, gaining the perspective that you just don't need as much space as you really think you need, which is really quite cool. And I just love that aspect of it all as well, which took me by surprise, you know, when I first stayed in one. So I think it's an experience everyone should do at least once, even if it's just a a stay or a holiday. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't, yeah, as much as we'd like to say, oh, everyone should move into a tiny home, the reality is it's not going to be for everyone. But if they can kind of, as you say, just have that short-term experience, get away out into nature with their family or on the on their own even or with their partner or whatever it might be, I think, you know, it's, it's just a, such an enriching experience for uh, for the soul, I guess. And yeah, I think it was you, Bronson, in one of your episodes, I heard you say something like, uh, you know, every home that you've stayed in, you've been able to try something new. So I'm curious, just maybe if you're able to share a little bit about some of those new experiences that you had. One thing that pops into my mind straight away is the composting toilet. Yeah. Oh, that's so yes. true. We, we'd never used one before. And we're like, oh, that seems interesting when we're watching them on YouTube before we got into um, doing these episodes ourselves. Yeah. And it was just like, wow, this is actually really easy to use. We should just Put one in our, our apartment if we can. Yeah, not that we could. <laughs> not that we could, but yeah. yeah it's, we were very, very apprehensive about the, the composting toilets uh, situation. But after experiencing it multiple times now, like there's mm. really just, it's, yeah. It's better than a normal toilet, I'd say. <laughs> Except well, we, you feel we, better for the yeah. environment. It makes you kind of feel good that you're not wasting yeah, water. No, yeah, totally. and then uh, on top of that, I guess we've been fortunate because we, we don't have to look after the other side of things yeah exactly 
<laughs> I guess our feedback from that, though, is, you know, in particular for, for people that are looking even for just a small escape, but might be a little bit afraid of, of staying somewhere that offers a composting toilet. It's definitely not something that you should be afraid of. Once you've, you know, once you've done it, you've done it. And from there, there's, there's nothing more to really worry about, I don't think. No, not at all. And another thing that was quite new to us, for us as a couple as well, was having regular fires. Yeah, fire they, pits. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is really cool. So, yeah, toasting marshmallows. And like, obviously, we, like, uh, everyone's done that stuff as a child. But did you do that as a child, Zisha? Yeah, every now and then. Yes, yeah, so, but as as adults, we never really did that. So that was quite cool to to yeah. do that and experience that at tiny each home. tiny home that we've stayed in so yeah. far. So, yeah, absolutely. Well, I guess it comes back to that. Like it, it kind of pushes you to to be outdoors as well more, and so like taking more time and and all of that. So yeah, I love that. And I think you also mentioned as well maybe the loft bedroom was a a new experience as well. And I love that you mentioned the composting toilet because. I mean, even in the tiny house space, people that are looking towards maybe going tiny for themselves, it is probably one of the most commonly asked questions. And it's always about like, what's the best type? Does it smell? Um, You know, all all of the things. I think that's like a a hot topic of conversation. So I love that. And, you know, I agree. I've, I've experienced many different kinds now just staying in different places and I will be having one in my own tiny home very soon. And I think that yeah, that environmental consciousness and the eco-friendly nature of not wasting so much water and also being able to to give back to the land uh, and, mm. and regenerate the land and all of that and, and, you know, many other things too. I think that's like there's something to be said for that for sure. And I would agree with what you guys say. It's not as bad as what it, it might sound like and you do get used to it. And and also like from my experience, and I don't know if you guys um, had the same experience as well, is like when people have those composting toilets usually in a somewhere that you go and stay there's usually like a whole list of instructions and they make sure that you know you know what to do and then you kind of get used to it and I'm curious as well so just I guess about the process of going on these home tour adventures has there been anything that's been unexpectedly challenging for you guys Oh, again, again, it's like every... <laughs> every experience tends to come with a new challenge, but that usually comes down to technology or the gear or, or the, the weather. weather. <laughs> yeah, or the weather or unexpected, all sorts of things. Yeah. <laughs> it could be, yeah. Just when we think that we're like, oh, yeah, we under, we understand, um, I don't know, for instance, the camera better than the camera would randomly pop up with another little message and we're like, oh, okay, now what does this one mean? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> or yeah, just little things that that are really out of our control when it comes to our gear sometimes, which can add just a small level of stress when we're you know trying to do each and every home you know the justice that it deserves. Yeah, and the time crunch, and then sometimes uh, a little extra decorating to like set the stage a little bit more and yeah. more of a homely stay. So we one thing that we love doing with our our home tour episodes is just going that little step above instead of just showing, I guess, the architecture and the layout of a home, but also trying to give people an insight or an idea or the essence of how they could decorate or, you know, doing those little lifestyle lifestyle shots, lifestyle shots and uh, detail shots of the decor or, or the building, those sort of things we find helps to bring the space to life a little bit more instead of just seeing a wide space. Well, tiny space in this case um, <laughs> room of sorts but yeah actually get to see the little things that are in that room that make it unique and and bring the personality to life that the hosts have put into each each day that they've created so sounds like it would be so much fun <laughs> you know and getting to to kind of be super creative with the space and and learning lots along the way and and I'm curious maybe what has been one of the biggest lessons that you've you've learned from this project and from staying in each of these different places expect the unexpected yes <laughs> And most of the time that is in a good light as well. And just going back to the composting toilet as an example, like personally, I was feeling quite worried about going to a stay and never having that experience before. And, you know, you've got a few questions running through your mind, but then once you've done it once, you're like, oh, I was worried, you know, worried for no, no reason. That was a pleasant surprise as such. 
the things that you just don't even know are going to pop up and yeah, just the experiences that it comes with and, and all the little extras in each day, like a lot of the, the container conversion in particular, like they had animals on property, which was just, you know, so special. And, you know, that was just so much more than we could have ever expected. Like quite often you'll go to a stay and especially with the tiny homes, because they're usually on such large amounts of land, you know, you just get so much more than what you ever expect. Like it's, it's so cool. It's a really, you know, exciting adventure every time. And they're all so different. And trying to encompass all of those great uh, features of a stay is we basically push ourselves to a whole nother level. Every yeah. time, every time we put an episode together, we put our our physical bodies on the line and our mental <laughs> <laughs> spirits on the line because it's like we want to make every episode the best we possibly can. We want to try and outdo ourselves every single every yeah. single shoot. And if there's any hiccups or speed bumps along the way, we always find a find a path through it, either yeah. over it, under it, or around it. We always find a way. And there's always those little moments where we're like in the middle of a shoot or Zisha might be in the editing room. It's like, how is how are we going to make this work? How is this going to come together? And we just got to stay true to the process. Yeah, and believe in ourselves that it always works out every yeah. single time. And when we, when we get to do that final upload, it's like it came amazing. together. <laughs> yeah, it worked, and it came together. <laughs> we're so stoked with it. And we and the one major thing is we always want the the hosts to love what we do as well. Like we, we put a lot of uh, heart and soul into every episode and a crucial part of that is to ensure that the tiny home and any home that we feature owners or, or managers of that space are proud and, mm. and, and very happy with what we've, what we've done with it. I love that. And I love that you talked about, but I guess it's like trusting in the process right and and oh yeah yeah <laughs> um and, and you know so many unexpected things I could imagine would, would come up and then it's kind of just running with it and and adapting and I I know what you you're talking about as well like you put everything into it and you want to come out with like the best possible thing that you can I I feel like I do that a lot with the podcast too so I can imagine what it's like as well a video does bring a whole other new level and a, and a lot more moving part. So I, I recognize that and I'm, I can't even imagine how much extra work that, you know, goes into all of that. And I think you guys do a really great job and what you present is, is so beautiful. And as I mentioned before, like you do bring the essence of each space. And I, I dare say that each owner or manager of the space would be really happy to, to see, you know, in the light that you present it. And I actually, I'm just curious, like I meant, I asked before about like biggest lessons, but I'm wondering, is there anything new that you've learned about each other along the way? Ooh, good question. Yeah. <laughs> I think for me, I've really admired Bronson for, you know, taking on the challenge and both him and I, we came into this with we, we didn't own any of the camera gear. I had I had never edited on the software that we used to edit our episodes. So Bronson's taken hold of the filming side of things. He's he's the camera guy. And mm-hmm. um, just seeing the hours of dedication he's put towards just making sure he can film the very best in the very best way possible. Yeah, it's just been really cool to see his dedication and commitment. And it's mm-hmm. been great to Work as oh. I do. Oh, oh. oh <laughs> that's Thank so nice. That. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Bronson? Very much same. Like I lead the charge when it comes to the videography stuff, but then Zisha leads the charge when in the editing room. So she puts hours and hours of work into that and challenging herself constantly. And the biggest thing is, and I don't want to toot our horn, but we're we're so dedicated and we're both so very hard working and we both have mm-hmm. equal goals in mind to always bring to light. Uh, the best possible result we can each time and every time. And that's why it works out so well is because we do, you know, we truly are a team. I'm yeah. surprised. Sometimes I think, oh gosh, how have we managed to do that all on our, just our very own with our own, you know, yeah. hands. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it works. It just works. And that's the magic of it. It just all comes together and it works. And um, yeah, it's been really cool just to to see what, what we've grown and, it's only the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've barely started and we've got so much more exciting adventures to go. Yeah. It's pretty cool. But yeah, on every 
every shoot we we both go i you know there's hundreds and hundreds or not yeah well there's like a few hundreds of different shots to bring a oh bring yeah a, bring a house together it's usually about 400 shots isn't it yeah four, wow. 400 individual <laughs> shots from like all the detail to the wide spaces to us camera facing and all that stuff and then and all our takes of course and all that yeah, yeah. <laughs> when we're talking to camera <laughs> yeah it's not a smooth we're not a smooth sailing presenter zisha is definitely the stronger presenter of us two and um sometimes i have to definitely lean on her a lot more <laughs> <laughs> it's both a skill we've also had to learn on top of the technical side of things and filming and editing camera facing is definitely a skill that we're both trying to yeah work on Get too yeah, yeah yeah and uh each each day each shoot it's uh we're a step closer but yeah, we'll, ne- we'll never be there we'll never be <laughs> at perfection because perfection doesn't exist and exactly we enjoy, we enjoy the ride and it's uh yeah it's exciting times we love it from, yeah from filming to trying to yeah to filming to presenting to editing to styling the home as well when we have to do that to yeah. time yeah. management to uh <laughs> making sure we do a uh, rain go away dance and, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and and then our sunshine dance followed by <laughs> 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 I love I love it. Get a bit of a behind the scenes here of you know how you guys operate and and what what happens behind the scenes. I love it. Yeah, yeah. There's no such thing as perfection. I think it's like an evolving journey, right? And the more that you do it, you get to practice. And I, I'm curious as well. What brings you guys the most joy when it comes to doing these home tours together? We're very proud of each other. We both know that we work very hard on each episode. Yeah. That's nice that that's the thing that brings you so much joy. That's lovely. <laughs> yeah. And then also going on that as us learning and evolving as a team as well is because we're also getting married, aren't we? Oh, yes, <laughs> yeah. we are. Aww. So that's, that's, another, that's another element of time and, and stress and um, stuff that's, that's obviously a very magical journey. But we're flying back to New Zealand, back to our home country, New Zealand, next Friday to... Um, to tie the knot to tie the knot <laughs> finally oh, wow. which is exciting for find the perfect place as well is because we're going to have the chance to film while we're in new zealand yeah so we've got um a couple of episodes lined up over there we're just praying for the best weather possible <laughs> oh, <laughs> amazing congratulations guys thank, thank you. you yeah well that brings up another question then like i'm wondering just doing this project together and going on these different adventures you know what has it done for your relationship if there's anything I don't know that you want to share about that has it brought you closer together is it I think that we really get the opportunity to uh share such like wonderful experiences with each other which is yeah I mean you just can't really beat it we've we've just been traveling to all these little places that we wouldn't have otherwise gone and like creating these memories together and coming back to the fire pit as an example of you know, we stayed at our first tiny home actually that did have a fire pit and we never like lit a fire in our adult lives. And we're just kind of both looking around like, where, where's the adults? Um, <laughs> who, who's going to do this fire thing? Yeah. And it's just kind of like, oh, that's right. Okay. Well, let's just work as a team and like try our very best. And then, you know, we, we, we did one and then we were all good, you know, learned that there's nothing to panic over and it's actually yeah. very simple, but taking on the challenges together like that and um, supporting each other, even over the small little things like lighting fires, we know Aww. that we have each other's support. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Zisha, Zisha is is a master of uh, gathering firewood, foraging <laughs> firewood. She absolutely loves it. She gets her gum boots on and she gets herself into the into the woods and um, just comes back with a massive backpack of <laughs> of firewood and she's like I'm ready and she just loves going back out there and getting more firewood and, yeah. it's just refreshing to be connected with nature and it's funny that you bring up the gum boots Bronson because you know we we never owned gum boots before this we live in an apartment and yeah. very much city living type type thing so you know to be able to buy some gum boots to be out in nature more because of all the rain and wet weather it was I don't know that was special too as little as it is it's the small things <laughs> yeah exactly totally the small things and that kind of I think ties in a lot with the whole you know tiny house wave living and thinking and seeing the world as well and uh yeah that's yeah really really beautiful and so you you mentioned before so 
I know that you've been doing tours around Australia and then when you go home to get married or go back to New Zealand, so you'll be doing some tours there. Um, are, are you kind of just keeping it to Australia and New Zealand at the moment just while you, you know, do more tours and, and expand in what you're doing? Yes, at, just at the moment, but we do have um, quite big dreams of eventually in the hopefully near future to be able to um, take it further afield Mm. You know, go to Bali or Europe or if, anywhere where a, a beautiful stay takes us, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it is a tricky one because obviously there's the whole world, which is awesome. But yeah. also Australia itself has so much to offer. And, you know, with certain restrictions and, and what have you, you know, originally when we thought of this idea, we're like, oh, you know, like it would be great to go over to Bali and, you know, obviously there's extremely cheap stays over there and luxury villas and, and what have you. Uh, but because we weren't really able to do such things when we, we you know, came up with the idea, it really did give us the opportunity to actually just take a look in our own backyard and to see what is just on our doorstep has just been utterly incredible. And even though, you know, they're within a few hours of home, a lot of them you just really feel as though you have been transported to another country or a, a tropical destination or, you know, I mean, the the cottage stay. That was really something special and magical. Oh, Mount Tambourine. Yeah. yeah. That was very cool. wow. So, you know, you just get transported to all of these places, although you're not traveling internationally. It's, it's, yeah, it's been really cool to see what's in our neck of the woods, I guess. Yeah. And there's, <laughs> and there's so much, and you can easily, and I'm, uh, I'm quite guilty of this myself. I get carried away and I think quite big, and I'm like, oh, I'd love to go to Europe, or I'd love to go to, you know, Asia and, over, back over to New Zealand and do a bunch of places there, and but then it's also like, well, Australia is a big place, and there's a there's a whole lot of homes from tiny living to mansions to everything. It's like the world is is basically our oyster, but we've got to also just be privileged that there's so much to to showcase on our doorstep mm. without having to um, travel overseas just yet. When I say not not saying having to, but it's it's not. Uh, a mandatory thing to keep on delivering content. I love that you said that because I feel like it's probably just like a reflection or a, a, I guess another version of what's ha- been happening collectively all over the world that it has kind of made us be like, wow, we've actually got so many beautiful places here at home uh, and I, I feel like you could probably have, you know, years worth of content just exploring Australia and going to stay in yeah. the different homes and and trying the different, you know, environments in different parts of the country. And I mean, yeah, there's definitely something to be said for traveling around the world and and then also just exploring your own in, in your own backyard. And, you know, speaking of like these perfect places, I am wondering for both of you, what does your perfect place look like or any specific features that um, and maybe, you know, whether it's if you're thinking about like designing your own tiny home at some stage in the future or just any kind of space or home that you'd like to live in? Yeah, definitely a tiny home would be probably the top of our list for our own perfect place. <laughs> yeah. And there's just so many cool features that we've seen at all, you know, at all the tiny stays that we've been on. Um, one thing that I was feeling, well, another thing I was feeling a little apprehensive about at first was the outdoor shower and bathroom that we experienced at the tiny boat stay. And uh, it was actually winter at the time we did that. And I was thinking, oh my goodness, I'm probably going to be quite <laughs> cold. But no, it was the complete opposite. And uh, I loved it so very much that I would highly consider recreating something very, very similar, you know, to call our own and have that experience because coming back to our uh, tiled bath white walls <laughs> Mm. just wasn't quite the same as looking at the beautiful trees at the the top of the tin shed type thing so <laughs> little features like that and just very homely feeling and um you know still having all the luxuries of a regular size house I guess you could say but just compacting it down and in terms of layout I think that it's too hard to kind of determine exactly how we would want our particular tiny home laid out Um, because there's just so many different ways of doing it and it's it's cool you know (laughs) you can achieve so much um, or achieve the same in so many different layouts or with you know there's so many different ideas which is just so cool you could research it just forever and ever you know like it's it's really cool to see what people do. 
the opportunities are endless when designing your own yeah. home, let alone tiny home. So it's, yeah, uh, I feel like it would be quite the challenge to to really knuckle down and be like, right, what do we really want? <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, Lucy, you said that you were making your own tiny home. How, how far away is that coming along? And you enjoying it? Yeah, so it's at the final stages. Like I'm. It's taking a slight bit longer than um, ex- expected, but I've, I'd say it's probably a couple of weeks away from being finished. So uh-huh. I, I actually went to the building company, when was it, yesterday, two days ago, um, just to, to see the progress and all of that. And because uh, I I'd, I'd visited like a little while ago and I saw the, the exterior of the home and, and now the interior is all coming together and it's at the final stages and they're just doing a little bit more timber work. But it's really, it's so beautiful and I'm really excited to be able to share it a bit more. And yeah, the design process was really, that was such a fun experience. I mean, it was completely new. Like I had no, no idea what I was doing, but I worked with the, the custom designer of the building company and it's just a really fun experience of like creating something from scratch that really is the essence of of you and what you want to where you spend most of your time and what you want to have in your own space and so I think you guys yeah you guys would love that ex- experience of doing that and um, seeing as though like you've stayed in a bunch of different tiny homes and you're kind of getting all these little ideas along the way I think that that's a really great way to do it because it's one thing to see the, all the videos online and and the beautiful photos on social media but when you actually get to go and stay at the places you can actually be like oh is this functional for me and and you know will this work for us and uh, and what works and what doesn't work and what you like and and what you don't like so it's 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 really cool and, and thank you for asking about that yeah, it's really exciting. Yeah, you must be so excited. Only it's not a, long at all. Yeah, only oh. a couple of weeks away. That's, <laughs> that's amazing. You must be biting at the bit to just get in there and... De- yeah, definitely. It's it's been a long time coming, and uh, you know, I, I guess like going on this journey of doing the podcast too, and being able to talk to like different people in the space that are already living that way, or that are doing interesting things in in the tiny house space, is is been really like a, a treat, uh, you know, to to go along that journey as well, and uh, and you know, meeting people like like you guys as well, who it, that's actually been one of the the best parts is just like connecting with all the amazing people and. You teased it a little bit before about, you know, you've got some upcoming episodes maybe you're going to film in New Zealand, but is there anything else that you, any exciting projects coming up for you guys or anything that you wanted to share about what you're doing with uh, Find the Perfect Place? Another tiny home's on the way. Yeah, we've got another tiny home. <laughs> another tiny way. home tour, which yeah. we're really looking forward to. That one's down in New South Wales. So that will be, um, yeah, coming soon. So, yeah, we were so looking forward to it. We've got so so much on the cards at the moment. And it's hard to know what to put time and energy into. But they're all exciting things. And, um, yeah, we're really looking forward to the next few months. No doubt they're going to fly by in a blink of an eye because this whole year has, which is crazy. Lots of excitement on the cards to look forward to and so many beautiful spaces locked in to uh, be a part of our Find the Perfect Place series. So uh, we're so looking forward to it. It's a never-ending search for the perfect place as well because we're – always looking and everyone's perfect place is different to them. So hopefully we help people discover their perfect place or yeah. find ideas from a collection of different perfect places that we showcase. So the project side of things, yeah, the wedding, filming the couple homes in New Zealand, and then we've got a, another tiny home in Yamba mm-hmm. coming up, which is super exciting. And then, um, yeah, a few more on the cards after that as well. So it's uh, it's busy times, but we want it to be busier. <laughs> <laughs> But it's time as well. It's this time. It's, it's a juggle. But it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's coming. There's going to be a lot more frequent content coming in hot in the future. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Looking forward to seeing that. And uh, where's the best place that people can come and check you guys out online and, and watch your videos and, and maybe just come say hi? Yeah, absolutely. So this first cuticle would be on YouTube. So our YouTube channel is Find the Perfect Place. We've also got a website, which is findtheperfectplace.com and there's also our social media handles which is under find the perfect place but um it's like fnd.theperfectplace cuz uh we find, get it we, yeah someone, someone had it oh, <laughs> yeah. damn it so um, the, yeah searching find the perfect place people will find us if people have their own perfect place be it tiny or mega mansion or something cool that they think they'd love for us to explore potentially to feature, then um, they can reach out to us via our website, fill out our form. And um, yeah, we'd, we'd love to 
we'd love to see what there is. Yeah. We're, we're always searching. The, the, the search is never ending. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, it's a journey, not a destination, right? Mm. And I love how you said that, you know, everyone's perfect place is different because it's so true. And uh, I think that I love what you guys are doing. And, and as I said before, uh, you know, I think you capture the essence of each space really well. So, you know, if you're listening to this episode, I'll put the uh, all the links in the show notes at tinyhouseconversations.com. Bronson and Zisha, thank you so much for your time today and for sharing. And it's been really great to, to get to know a little bit more about you guys. Thank you so much, Lucy. We're we're absolutely thrilled and honoured that you would um, even invite us on on your <laughs> podcast in the first place. So it's a very humbling and, and and lovely experience. So we've really enjoyed talking to you and sharing our story. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Ah, <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Thank you as well. It's been yeah. I, look, I I love being able to have a platform to, for people to share their stories. And so it was really great to hear yours. And, and I'm sure, you know, it'll, it'll inspire a lot of people. And I urge everyone, like, go and check out what Bronson and Zisha are doing. And if you have, you know, a stay that they can come and film at, you know, if you have your perfect place that you'd love to, them to come film at, then, yeah, make sure you get in touch with them. And uh, stay tuned every Thursday for new episodes of Tiny House Conversations. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you next week. Thanks again for listening. And if you enjoyed the conversation today, you found it valuable and you want to support the podcast, the best way you can do that is to share the love. That way I can keep bringing you more Tiny House Conversations to help you on your own tiny journey. So here are three ways that you can support the podcast. Number one, if you have a friend or family member that you feel would benefit from hearing these conversations, feel free to share it with them, email them, text them, send them a telegram, do whatever you need to do to share it with them. Number two, if you hit the subscribe button, you'll know exactly when the next episode is live. And number three, if you head on over to Apple Podcasts or wherever you're listening to podcasts and leave a five-star rating and review, Thank you so much in advance. I appreciate you and I'll see you in the next episode.